Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about how to get started working with a tech editor. This is a really common question that I get from very, very new pattern writers. People are very early on in their stages or got started writing as a hobby for their quilt guild or something like that and now want to formalize it into more of a business. So we're going to talk about it today. So first things first, why might you want to work with a tech editor? That's a great question. So tech editors are basically quality control for quilt patterns. That's how I like to think about it. There's a couple of functions that they're gonna do. First, they're gonna read through the pattern and make sure everything makes sense, just kind of for general readability and flow. Does it make sense? Do we understand what you're trying to do with this quilt pattern? That's kind of the first most basic understanding. The second thing they're gonna look for, which I would say is like 60 to 70% of what a tech editor is doing is checking the quilt math. Quilt patterns have a ton of math in them. A lot of people don't realize that, but there are so many numbers that have to work out just exactly correct in order for that pattern to be made successfully. And that's really important because your customers are coming to you and paying you for a pattern and they wanna be able to trust and make sure that all of those dimensions, all of the math, all the fabric requirements, they can follow those instructions and they will have no issues making your quilt. And just one of those numbers being wrong can throw the whole entire thing off. So 60 to 70% of what a tech editor is going to do is check and verify every single dimension, every single bit of math to make sure it's all good. The third thing that they're going to do is just kind of general copy editing. This includes punctuation and spelling, of course, but also just kind of general readability stuff. So the more that you read quilt patterns, the more you kind of learn what wording and formatting options generally produce the clearest, most concise quilt patterns. And so your tech editor is going to be able to read through those things and make suggestions about certain areas of your pattern that could be rewarded in order to be more clear. And that's really, really valuable. And that's why it's really important to get somebody who does this professionally, because on average, they've read just way more patterns than, you know, your friend at the Quilt Guild or a tester that's just kind of doing this to help you out. That's a really, really valuable experience. And that's why you pay them good money for it. So let's talk about what to expect. First of all, when you engage a tech editor, it's not uncommon for them to have some sort of a contract or a service agreement. I use this in my own business, and the reason for that is because we're going to exchange money. This is going to be a business transaction, and business just works a lot better if you have kind of the rules of engagement laid out. And so a service agreement or a contract or something along those lines just kind of does that. They could be very short. They could be a little bit longer. It just kind of depends. But don't be surprised if you get that because they're going to invest time in your pattern that they're going to expect to get reimbursed for. And so a contract just helps protect them for their time. Um, but it also protects your IP, right? You're going to send them an unpublished pattern that would be difficult to combat a copyright infringement on if that person is unscrupulous and takes that pattern and starts to copy elements of it, right? God forbid anything like that happens, but having that contract in place just gives you extra protection for the IP that you're going to be sending over. In general, turnaround times for most tech editors tend to be between a couple of days to about a week. Anything less than about three days is usually considered rush and will be charged kind of a slightly higher rate because of that. So anything from like three days to a week, that's pretty typical turnaround times for pattern tech editing. So what you're going to do is basically take your pattern, export it or save it as a PDF file. You don't want to send like an illustrator file or whatever kind of publishing file that you're sending. If that's InDesign or Microsoft Publisher, any of those ones, you don't want to send that raw file and give them complete access to it. It's also very difficult to edit like that. So turn it into a PDF form. You're going to send that to them and then they're going to write all of their comments on it and hand you back basically a marked up PDF. So you're going to get your pattern back and it's going to basically have a ton of markup on it. And then it's up to you to kind of go through that pattern and decide which edits you're going to implement and which ones you're not. At the end of the day, this is your pattern. And so your tech editor can make suggestions all they want, but you're not obligated to follow every single one of them. You should consider it carefully, right? Because that person's a professional and that experience is relevant and probably pretty valuable. That's why you're paying them for it. But at the end of the day, if you don't agree with it and you know what you're doing with your pattern, you don't have to follow everything that they say. And that's totally fine. Different people are going to have different opinions and the edits that your tech editor provides at the end of the day is an opinion, an expert opinion, but an opinion. And that's it. If you're constantly in a situation where your tech editor is bringing you a lot of feedback that you just don't agree with, that might be an indicator that that person's not the greatest fit for you. And that happens, right? 
not everybody works great together, even if they're both great people. It's not anything on you or on them. It's just they're not a good fit for you. And it might be time to kind of look for another tech editor, which is fine. You shouldn't feel bad about doing that. Just politely and professionally let them know that they're not a good fit for you and move on. So once you get your pattern back and it's all marked up, you then can implement that feedback. And if you desire, you can send that pattern back to your tech editor for a second round of edits. This is an option that I offer to most of my clients. And I think it's pretty frequent with most tech editors as well, because sometimes if those edits are substantial and you've made huge changes to your quilt pattern, you're going to want another set of eyes on it before you finally publish it and launch it out into the world. And that's totally fine. Most tech editors are fine kind of holding their invoice until you've had that second round of edits. Just don't let it go too long because as editors, we work on a bunch of different patterns. And so if there's a really long gap, like three, four weeks in between looking at patterns, you're going to have forgotten all of the edits that you made to begin with. And then it just takes longer to kind of pick that up and take a second look at it. So try to get it in a timely manner if you can. Um, you'll ultimately end up with a better editing experience if you can. But if you decide you don't need a second look at it, then they will probably just invoice you. You should expect an average pattern cost to be between 40 and $60. Now that depends on a lot of things. If you've got a very super complicated pattern with six different sizes and super complicated cutting instructions where every single size is different, that's gonna take a lot longer to work through and it's just the nature of the beast. So if you're writing really complicated patterns with a bunch of different sizes, you're gonna be closer to like the 60 or even $80 mark. But if you tend to write fairly simple black paste patterns with just you know two to three sizes, fairly straightforward, you should be closer to like the 30 to $40 mark. And again, tech editors can charge vastly different rates per hour. They can charge by the project and the kind of average time that it takes them to edit a pattern can change as well. But net costs, we're talking all in total for a pattern. Those are about the ranges that you're looking at, 40 to $60. And that's just kind of all comes out in the wash. A lot of times you'll see editors that have very low hourly rates, but will take four and five hours on a pattern. And so the net effect is about the same as somebody who works very quickly, but charges at higher rate. Now, when it comes to finding a good tech editor, I do actually have a blog post on this. I'm gonna link to in the comments. It kind of outlines all the different things to look for. The main thing is just to make sure that you find somebody experienced and somebody who's got some sort of technical background. Now, what I mean by that is somebody who's good at math, because like I said, 60 to 70 percent of what your tech editor is doing is checking the math. And so if you've got somebody who's got experience with numbers, either they're you know an accountant or a high school math teacher or an engineer or a scientist, something like that, somebody who's very, very used to doing a lot of math reliably they're gonna tend to make much better tech editors than somebody who's just kind of read a lot of quilt patterns. Not that there's anything against that. You can find good people in both areas, but these are just kind of generally some things to look at. There are unfortunately such things as bad tech editors, people that miss a lot of math errors, which is not a good feeling at all, especially if you're paying somebody to do a job for you. So make sure you kind of vet the person you're gonna be working with a little bit. And if you're repeatedly finding errors of theirs or your testers are finding a bunch of errors that they've missed, it might be time to consider somebody else. And that's totally fine. As far as reaching out to someone, most tech editors will kind of have a page on their website that outlines their services and how to get in contact with them. It is as simple as just reaching out via email. They'll get in touch with you. They'll schedule either a time to kind of chat online and get to know you a little bit or set up a service contract with you and begin accepting your patterns either way. It's very, very non-threatening. You do not ever need to feel bad if this is your first pattern and you're just getting started on this journey. Maybe you don't have a website yet. Maybe you don't really have an Instagram account for your business. That's totally fine. You don't need to feel bad about that at all. Tech editors are your friends. We just wanna help you write the best pattern you can. And we love seeing all of your beautiful designs. So don't hesitate to reach out. We're also happy to chat about any kinds of issues that you're running into as you're writing your pattern or if you just need kind of a second opinion as you start to organize your pattern into something great. Alrighty, I hope that was helpful. I will be back next week with another Tech Tip Tuesday. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. See ya.